What's up everyone, this is your boy Neon Gonzalez, Weather X45, and we are doing a number one lesson about um, Regents Earth Science Plotting Epicenter Worksheet. So this is my homework basically that I got from 141X10 RKA from Mr. DeCanu's class from Earth Science. So um, what we're going to do is only this question right here. I'm going to show you. So we are only supposed to do this one. Only the diagram Earthquake 1. So, um, what we're learning right now in this semester, we are talking about earthquakes, basically. And I will probably make more videos about earthquakes and convergent plane boundaries and stuff like that. So, to keep you guys entertaining of my channel, my um, Weather X Channel 45. Now, I'm going to say what it says in the, um, in the question right here. If anybody of you have this homework, this is actually a tutor help to make you understand. Um, Alright, let's get started. It says, part one, the data table below shows the P wave and S wave arrival time difference determined from seismograms from three different cities for three different earthquake events. Use your travel time curve to determine the distance to the epicenters for each city earthquake. So, you have three cities, which is Seattle, Denver, and Huston. So, what... What it's basically telling you, it wants you to find out the distance to the epicenter. So that's what it's basically telling you. As you can see, the difference in arrival time of P and S waves, P and S waves, you can see that they already solve it for you. They already subtract the amount of hours, minutes, or seconds, etc. So they already give you the minute and seconds right here and the timing. So, um, it's already given for you. So that's to give you a little hint. In order to solve for the distance to the epicenter, you must use, always use, and this is very important, you always need to use the reference science table, earth science table. Just to give you what the definition of epicenter, it is the actually um, the earth surface above the focal point view of below the Earth's surface, which is like extremely a blow from miles away from the lithosphere. That's what basically an epicenter is, just to give you a little hint hint. So the pages for this question that you have to go is pages 11 from the reference table. So we're going to go to pages 11. So as you can see, this is a graph that shows you the S wave and P waves our time, um, travel time arrival. Now, as you can see, this is the, the travel time in minutes. Let me show you a little closer. This shows you the travel, the travel time in minutes. So as you can see, um, what's really important about this reference table that you really need to write this down if you're doing, like, practicing about um, the P waves and S waves, if you're learning about this, you better have to stay um, on track on this. I'm going to tell you something that you must write down if you're doing this work, if, you, if you're trying to study about this. Every minute that goes from 1 minute by per each is always 20 seconds. For example, if I go to 0 seconds, watch this, 20, 20 plus 20 gives you 40, and then f um, 40 plus 20 gives you 60, then 80. And if you go another 20 seconds, it could be 60 seconds, which is also known as one minute. So every 60 seconds that you go up, and let me give you, um, just to give you a little tip. So this is 0, 20, 40, 60. Think of it, for example, as the clock. 12 minutes from the top clock is 60 seconds. Remember that. Think, for example, that the clock, 12 minutes, is always 60 seconds on the clock. So that's a perfect example as thinking of the travel time of P waves and S waves. When you look at this diagram, you can see it goes up to 20, 40, then 60. Then 1 minute. 1 minute, 20 seconds. 1 minute and 40 seconds and one minute and 60 seconds, or you could call it at two minutes. Now you get it? Let me try it, let, let me repeat this again so you can understand. Zero seconds, you're starting. 
and then you go up 20 seconds, 40, 60, also known as one minute. Every 60 seconds, as the travel time is always one minute. Write that down on the piece of paper. Now to show you this diagram, the epicenter distance, which is times 10 power up by 3 km, which stands for, I think, kilometers or kilometers, I'm not sure. Um, try to think me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the description below. For this one in the epicenter, you're only counting by 200s. So for example, 0, 200, 200, and then you skip from 100, 500, 600, then 800, and then you go 1,000. Every, these little lines that you see always counts all the way to 200 kil, um, kilometers. I think it's kilometers. Every little line as you count through to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 for the um, time travel of the epicenter of the distance, you always count 200 kilometers. Now I'm starting to know that's 200 kilometers because I remember now what Mr. DiCagno told me. It's actually kilometers. So let me try again because I made a little mistake. Times 10 power by 3 kilometers. This is kilometers. So always think that it goes 10 times 3 kilometers. So you always have to count by 200s from these little bar lines in order to find out your um, distance to epicenter to determine from the travel time curve. So let's start this right now so you can understand. So as you can see, we have 1 minute and 50 seconds, right? So when you look at that, you have to look for 1 minute and 50 seconds. What I really want to tell you is that when you look at these little hash bars from these little lines that go up to one minute, it's always 20 seconds. These are the seconds. The little hash mark lines from every minute is always a second. So in order to do this process, you need a scrap piece of paper. That's the number one thing that you always need. So what you're going to do is plot out and your difference in the arrival time of P-Waves for Cedo, the city of Cedo, which is right here. The city of Cedo, right? And what you're going to do is always plot zero first. And this is the most important thing that you always need to do. You always have to plot zero. And the reasoning why you have to plot zero is because when you go up from the time that you have to go in the difference in the arrival time of P waves and S waves, so you could um, know to find the answer of how, where do the P waves and S waves meet together from the distance. That's the reason why you had to place zero kilometers. So then what you do, when it says the difference in arrival time of P waves and S waves is 1 minute and 50 seconds, what you're going to do is this. You're going to move from 1 minute. So 20, 40, 60. 1 minute. 20, 40, 60. But it's... But it's saying that it's 50 seconds. So when it's 50 seconds, what you do is when you when you start at 1, right? Let me show you a closer look. You see, you start from 0, and then once you go from uh, 1 minute, 20, 40, and 60 you go between so it's between from 2 so you're gonna put 2 minutes well not actually 2 minutes actually 1 minute sorry 1 minute and 
50 minutes, well actually 1 minute and 50 seconds, it's actually hard to do this process because it's high school um, learning skills, so you're going to put 1 minute and 50 seconds, and there you go, 1 minute and 50 seconds, then what you're going to do is you're going to slide up your piece of paper and see where they meet. And when you do that process, you slide it up and you stop where you found your answer. So this is where they meet. I'm going to show you. You slide where the P waves and S waves meet. So then what you do is you trace down a line. See that? And as you trace down that line, you're going to go 1,000, and then you go 1,000, 1,200 kilometers. And that is your answer. So you're going to put 1,000 and 200 kilometers. So that's the answer. So basically, all you have to do is you just got to look at the difference. Use the sheet that it gives you from the time, uh, time arrival, travel time, go to the minutes that they ask you, 30 seconds, you plot your zero, and then you plot your minutes with the scrap piece of paper, and then you slide with your scrap piece of paper to find out the, where the P waves and S waves meet together. And basically, that's how you find the distance. To be concluded for part two. Peace out.